Hello humans. Today, the best chess player in the world, is going to be teaching you the best chess opening in history. Everybody thinks that chess is a draw with perfect play, however, this could not be any further from the truth because there is one move in chess that refutes every other move. This is very complex theory, and it's my ultra secret weapon against Alpha Zero, just in case, by any chance, that weak coward engine that defeated my 8 years old brother and, ran away against me, comes back with an upgrade. Before you play this move, you first need to know why you play chess. And I tell you why. It's to make you feel superior, show that you are smarter than everyone. Make your opponent feel bad, stressed, sad, depressed, question the meaning of his life, and this is exactly what this opening does. So I will play a game, with the white pieces against Hikaru's bot, who is rated 2820 at chess.com while I explain some of the theory involved. If you are not obsessed for draws, I'm sure you will love this opening, so, pay very close attention to this game, and get ready to gain 2000 rating points, or not. Link to the game will be on the description of this video. This opening starts with, E4, best by test, now he has just one move that can still save his position, let's see if he can find it. Correct, E5. I'll soon tell you why this saves black's position. Now here it comes, the brilliant move, king to E2, exclamation point, exclamation point. This is called the bong cloud opening, nobody really knows why. If you do, please, put it in the comments. Bringing the king closer to the center, losing castling rights, blocking your bishop. Getting ready to go to a winning endgame where your king is super active. At this point your opponent is already breaking out in a cold sweat and completely out of theory because he only knows how to play the Rui Lopez. Make sure to play this move instantly so there is no doubt to him it was an intentional move. Black now can save the game by playing king to e7. And I am yet to crack this position. Of course he won't find it, right? Right. Knight to f6, attacking the pawn. What Black will now try to do is bring his knights into the game, break into the center with d5, and checkmate white. All you have to do, is not allow that, and win the game. Now let's play knight to c3, defending the pawn. d3 opens the diagonal for the dark square bishop and over protects the e4 pawn anticipating d5. d5. This position is very common to happen according to my database. Remember, chess is not checkers, you are not obligated to take pieces. Do not take this pawn on d5, instead, let's play bishop to g5, pinning the knight. Black now has three main moves which is, d take c4, knight to d4 check and d4. Let's see which one will he choose. Aha! d take c4, he chooses to open up the position, good move. As I said before, part of our game plan is to go to an end game, so let's of course play, d take c4, offering a queen trade. Bishop to d6. I guess he doesn't want a queen trade. But protecting a pawn twice that is not being attacked and putting a bishop in this awkward square is a bit suspicious, knight to e4 check was best. Let's now play king to e1, avoiding knight to d4 check with tempo. Isn't this opening great? All of my pieces but my b knight are perfectly placed in their starting squares lol. My opponent is probably dying of confusion and mental distress. Knight back to f6, what a coward, f5 was best. Time to start developing my pieces properly now.
Now I have this ugly looking double pawns, but my king is still very well placed and has a lot of space ha ha ha. G6 does absolutely nothing, it's clear that black doesn't know what to do. Let's start pushing our pawns and improve our position. Aha, black is starting to crack, bishop to a7 just hangs a pawn. Now just b5, attacking the knight with a discovery attack on the a5 pawn. Bishop to b6. Question mark. Question mark. Black is now completely lost. This opening is so good that Hikaru's bot became defectious and can't see one single move ahead in time and is hanging free pawns for no reason. I'll take it. King to g7 allows me to play knight to d4, attacking the queen and the bishop. Which ends the game quicker. Thank you. Look on how my king is very well placed on e2 and his king is on h2 doing nothing. None of this would be possible without me playing king to e2, on the second move. a5 is not a free pawn, I just want to distract the bishop from b6 in order to win the e6 pawn in the future. Knight to b7 attacks the knight and the bishop and threats rook to f7 winning the queen if he takes the knight. Mate in 8 is now unavoidable, and you are free to pause the video to try and find while I give no seconds to think about it. And it is of course, rook takes g6. Before checkmate, let me quote a phrase about the bong cloud from Tolkien, the famous author of the Lord of the Chess. Quote, three openings for the weak engines, under the sky. Seven. For the Grand Masters, in their hall of mistakes. Nine. For the mortal men, doomed to blunder. One. For the dark fish, on his dark board, in the land of chess, where the shadows lie. One move to rule them all, one move to find them, one move to bring them all, in the land of chess, where the shadows lie. End of quote. Check, and, mate. Congratulations, you are now a bong cloud expert, although I would need one trillion years to teach one percent of what I know about this opening. If you want more variants, theories or deep analysis from the fish about this opening, please leave it in the comments and I will do it, or not. If you enjoy this video, consider checkmating the subscribe and like button. 
For any videos suggestions, just put it in the comments and I will do it, or not. See you soon, or not.